Hi, in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the FFmpeg SR filter, which can scale the input by applying one of the super resolution methods based on convolutional neural networks. So it's a sort of AI upscaler for FFmpeg. However, if you try and search for this filter online, you'll get one post up on um, the a video stack exchange from several years ago asking how do I actually use this filter and a guy called Mark's gone through and explained how this all works and the issue with this is you need a certain combination of uh, things applications to actually get this filter to work and he's got a long sort of how to of how you install everything um, and as you can see there's a lot of stuff here but if we scroll past this, there is actually a section down here where someone's replied saying that what they've actually done is created a Docker image that has got all this set up, all ready to go. So you can actually just use this Docker image to upscale um, videos using this, uh, this SR filter. So this is the uh, repository, the FFmpeg with lib tensorflow um, repository on github with a docker image that you can use so what i'm going to do is actually go through and show you how this works and what you've got to do to get it set up some issues with se linux that you've got to work around so what i'm going to do is come across um to the desktop and what i have to do because i'm on um fedora which uses se linux i actually have to create a temp data directory to work in to work around some issues with file permissions so the first step is i'm going to create this temp data directory and then what i need to do is give it 777 permissions like so i'm now going to change into this directory and what i've got here is a video example that they use on the site so what we've got here is this flower uh, video here which you can see is uh, 352 by 288 and the video has just disappeared okay you can see that's really small so what we're going to do is we're going to upscale this two times so what i'm going to do is come across here and actually copy this command and i'll show you how all this works but i just want to show you what the upscaling looks like first of all so we're going to whack that in here and what you'll see it is actually using the NVIDIA um, GPU to upscale this and it's doing that by using the NVIDIA uh, container toolkit so if we have a look down here we've now got two files we've got this original Y4M and we've got this upscaled MP4 so again here's the original and here's the upscaled version Okay, that's pretty good. Now, the advantage of this um, is in a previous video, I showed you an application called Dandere 2X, uh, which uses Wafu um, 2X in the background to actually upscale videos. Now, the issue with that is, although it works, it literally takes about an hour, a minute to process the video. So, You've got a five minute video, expect to wait for five hours. So this is a lot quicker, uh, as you can see. So what I'm gonna do is actually go through and um, uh, show you some videos that have upscaled. So uh, upscale. So what I've done is taken a selection of videos and upscaled them. So what I've got here is a copy of two kittens which is a um, public domain cartoon we've got big bunny big buck bunny and we've got the sneezing panda so what we'll have a look at is the sneezing panda first of all so this is the original so you can see here this is six four this is 600 by uh, 480 you can see here okay so that's the that's the original video Wait for it. Yeah. 
There we go. So, what's the upscaled version look like? There we go. Here's the upscaled version. So you can see this is uh, 1200 by 960. And you can see there's no pixelation or anything. Now, I should point out this isn't like a all those AI upscalers where it sort of sharpens everything and all that kind of palaver. Basically, uh, we're, we're upscaling the, the video and we're using these um, neural networks to supposedly do a better job um, than the regular Lanxus, um, uh filter. So you can see here what this looks like. There's no... Um, pixelation or distortion or um, funny, funny color casts because uh, Dandere 2X that I covered in a previous video can um, alter the contrast of the video. Okay, so there's, um, there's Panda. Um, what I've also got, I'll go through and I'll show you the two kittens. So I believe this was actually, it may be voiced by Abbott and Costello. Um, I may be mistaken, but that's what the characters look like. So here we go. This is, again, this is in the public domain. So there's no issues with playing this YouTube. Um, so what we can see here is we've got a 960 by 720 video and the uh, video has just disappeared behind the terminal. I love to eat. Well, then go up and get the bird out of that nest and we'll eat. But I don't want to fight no bird. I like birds. I go hungry first. What's the matter, Freddy Cat? This is only a tiny little bird. Okay, so that's the video. So let's have a look at the upscale version. Two kittens, two X. And what you'll, ultimate, um, you'll see here is if I can uh, I'll get this to... This has been upscaled to 1920 by 1440. Okay. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bird out of that nest and we'll eat. But I don't want to fight no bird. I like birds. I go hungry first. What's the matter, Freddy Cat? This is only a tiny little bird. You mean a poor little dinsy wincy itsy bitsy the Senseless boy? Yes. Let me at him! Let me at him! I'll get him, baby! Gangway! I'll moitlize him! <laughs> okay. So, that was actually a video from archive.org uh, from the public domain. So, what I'll go through and actually do now is show you Big Buck Bunny. Now, the issue with showing you this is uh, twofold. Uh, you may not see the difference because it's actually being delivered by YouTube and, you know, it being compressed and everything. To actually really see this properly, what you would need to do is actually have a, you know, large uh, screen. Uh, you know, if you had a 4K screen, you would be able to see the difference between a 1080 and a uh, something that's been upscaled to 4K. So what I'll do now is um, go through Big Buck Bunny. And you can see this is a 1280 720. Okay. This is when he gets Bunny Rambo. Okay, so that's the original version, which is 128720. So we've upscaled this two times. So let's have a look at this. BBB28. You can see it instantly fills the whole screen. Let's have a look at the actual size. This is 2560 by 1440. So it's gone up um, from 720 two times. So what we're not looking for um, some kind of AI, increased sharpness, that kind of stuff. Basically, what we're looking at is how has the picture been affected by being upscaled twice? Mm -hmm. 
So now you may be saying I can't see any difference or anything. Um, and so that's because it's you know being delivered on YouTube. But you can see the video's been upscaled twice. Um, let me just come back across to this. You can see there's no artifacts or uh, pixelation, any video kind of issues. Okay, this is a good bit here. So let's get to the Bunny Rambo section. Okay, so that's a little example of how the output looks. So what I'll actually do is um, go through, um, and I'm actually going to up. I've got the CD data. Okay. I'm just going to remove these, and what I'm going to do is actually upscale the. Uh, sneezing panda and then show you the nvidia smi so that you can actually see that this is using the gpu um dp desktop upscale panda dot mkb bang and what i'm going to do this time is actually uh, run a script that i wrote to actually simplify this so i'll show you the scripts in a second ffmpeg super resolution panda and what i'm going to do here nvidia smi okay so you can see obs is um being used by the gpu because i'm um i think i'm recording mbank so what i'm going to do here is run this um script with the panda file to upscale it and switch back to the nvidia smi show you that FFmpeg in the Podman or Docker container is using the NVIDIA container toolkit so that it can access the GPU and use that to actually process the video. Okay, there you go. Use a local bin FFmpeg. You can see here it's going through and it's upscaling. And what you'll see here is the speed. Um, so FFmpeg dash I panda just to give you uh, so that was a was it like a 10 second video or something um duration 18 seconds so that was an 18 second video and you could see process it pretty quick and you can see that it was actually using ffmpeg with nvidia to actually upscale this okay so what are the sort of steps we need to go through to get all this working and what are some of the issues um, that you might need to work around if you're on uh, fedora which uses se linux so i've made some notes so the requirements for this are docker or podman podman is a red hat uh, spin on docker and the difference is that it doesn't run as a daemon um, as root all the time. So that's an advantage. So you can use this with either Podman or Docker and Fedora comes with Podman pre-installed. So if you're on another distribution, you're either gonna need to set up Docker or Podman and follow the instructions for your distro. The next thing we need is the NVIDIA container toolkit for GPU acceleration. So again, this is using CUDA. And so you're gonna want a uh, NVIDIA graphics card. I don't know um, the support for AMD or anything like that. So what I'll do is I'll actually go through my notes here. So uh, these are some of the um, links that I actually came across. Um, this is um, the SR filters, this is the repository, um, 
And again, if we have a look here, the issue with actually getting this set up is that you need a specific version of lib tensorflow ffmpeg and cuda and also it needs to work with the version of cuda and lib tensorflow need to you know work match with your nvidia graphics card so it's actually a bit of a pain to get set up because you may be you know on fedora 38 and you have a mismatch between your graphics card and lib tensorflow and all that kind of stuff so again the first thing we need to do is install the NVIDIA Container Toolkit. And now these are the instructions for Fedora. If you want another distribution, they're gonna be different. So don't be an idiot and copy the ones for Fedora if you want Ubuntu or something like that. So on Fedora, what we're doing is we're actually adding the, and this repository, uh, it's a kind of like, like, it's a bit like PPAs on Ubuntu. Um, Basically, we're adding a repository to install the NVIDIA toolkit. So we add the, the repository, and then once we've done that, we can install the NVIDIA container toolkit. Then what we need to do is we actually need to edit this file, except for NVIDIA container runtime config.toml. And by default, the container toolkit requires that your GPU containers run as root, but we can actually change that so they actually run as a user process. So you just run this command and it will change the uh, configuration to fix that. So if we have a quick look here, what you'll see is uh, no C groups. By default, this is set to false. So all you need to do is edit this file and change it to true so that the NVIDIA toolkit isn't running as root, it's actually running as your user. Now what you can do is actually test NVIDIA SMI inside a Podman container by running um, this Podman um, command, which will pull down a, an image and you can use that to actually test uh, if GPU acceleration is working from within the container. So the next step is we actually need to install um, uh, this Docker image. So there's actually a link somewhere here. Um, okay, so this is basically saying you, you can either, um, you can actually build this, you know, you can pull down the Git repository and build it if you want. Um, but there is actually a, okay. Here we go, Docker Hub. All right, so if you're um, on Docker, you can just run this command. Okay, you can just run Docker pull. Da, da, da. Um, I'm using Podman, so the, the only difference between the two is we just changed the, the, the word Docker for Podman. So it's Podman or Docker pull mirror to, uh, mirror to FFmpeg TensorFlow. Now, on uh, Fedora, when I run this command, what it does is actually, it, it gives me a list of several places where I can pull this image from. And the first one that's selected by default is RPM Fusion. And if you select that, it's just going to say no manifest found. So what you need to do, if you're on Fedora, you need to select docker.io mirror to FFmpeg TensorFlow latest. Okay. So that's actually going to pull down everything. That's going to pull down a couple of gig um, of stuff about, uh, I think it's about four. Let me just check. So Podman images. Yeah. Okay. Four gig. Which may seem a lot, um, but it's actually pulling in all these uh, pre-configured uh, models that, as I said, by default, uh, you, you, if you're doing this manually, you actually have to train the models, and apparently it takes like a day to train a single model, so uh, you don't want to do that. Uh, okay, so this is we've got Podman or Docker has pulled this down, and this is the actual Docker file here. And what you'll see here here is we've got like a particular version of CUDA. Um, Ubuntu, um, it's actually running FFmpeg 4, it's not an issue, um, and then lib TensorFlow, and it's installing all these uh, packages and setting all this stuff up. 
So what we actually need to do is a couple of things. Uh, the first one is we, we actually want to set a, um, create an alias in our ZSH file. So if I come across here, .zshrc, what you'll see here is I have an alias called FFmpeg TensorFlow, which is equal to this podman or Docker command. So what we've got here is podman run rm and what i've actually done is actually put in a couple of extra things i needed to do to get this working get the gpu working and also get around um, issues with se linux on fedora so what i actually had to add was this section here security dash opt label equals disabled and again this may just be a uh, se linux thing um so I had to do that to get the GPU working. Now, the second thing is I had to change this section here. Um, if I come across, what you see, this is the, um, where's the command? Oh, yeah, okay. So here's the, here's the alias that they're actually giving you, uh, which you can see is using Docker. And what you'll see here is this section, VPW, the data and what this is doing this is actually mapping the directory on the left to the directory on the right so the directory on the right is data and that is the podman container so what this is doing is it's mapping the present working directory to the data directory inside the podman or docker container now because I'm um, using SE Linux, I had permission issues where it couldn't access the container couldn't access my home directory. So, what I've done as a workaround for that is I'm using this dash dash privileged option, and then I'm mapping temp data to the data directory. So, what I have to do, um, come up here is this section here i create a um this should be make directory dash p um temp data and then i change the permission 777 to temp data and what that does is that allows the container access to that directory and so basically i work in that directory and i put the files to process in that directory and their output um, in that directory if you're not on um, Fedora with SE Linux, you won't have this issue, but I'm mentioning it in case you are and start tearing your hair out, figuring out why it's not working. So what we did was we created the temp directory, changed permissions, and then we actually um, copy the file in there. So what I've done, as I said, I created a, um, rather than actually you know, do, doing this, um, you know, creating an alias and then like having to run this command here, this long command here. Uh, what I've done is actually just knocked up a script. So, bin ff, uh, ff super resolution. Okay. So, is the script usage, and we'll scroll down. So, this is the function. So as you can see here, what I'm actually doing, uh, let me just increase the size here so you can see it a bit better. Um, this is the function that actually gets run. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually putting in the podman command directly in the script. I'm not actually using it from the alias, but um, I've got the alias set up so that, um, you know, if I just want to run one off commands, I can. So we've got podman run. We've got a security label disabled needed for SE Linux. Um, GPUs all. What this um, U, um, this IDU and IDG, that's going to be your user ID. So uh, ID echo ID, put the thing down the right way, might help. Uh, da, da, da. ID. You okay, a thousand. So that's what um, most likely your um, user ID is going to be, and um, it's going to be a thousand. And then again, what we're doing here is privileged mapping the temp data to the data directory. Um, 
Again, this is only for, needed for um, Fedora with SE Linux. Um, by default, what it's set up to do is use the present working directory so that you can run it in any directory, um, you know, like your desktop or whatever, um, and it will work. But this is the workaround for something on SE Linux. Now, what we've got down here is this filter complex. And what you'll see here is we've got um, this extract plane YUV. And I believe the way that this works is actually you kind of got different planes, and I think it works on the Y plane to actually upscale stuff. Um, and then what we have is the actual the, the scale factor and the model. Now, the model only supports certain scale factors, I believe. Um, so the one that's set by default is ESPCN, and I think by default that only supports a scale factor of two. Um, if we come across to the, okay, uh, and the other one is the, yeah, so this is the um, ESPCN is the efficient subpixel convolutional neural network model. Uh, then we also have the super resolution convolutional neural network model, which is the SRCNN. Now, I think the difference between the two is this one here supports a um, scale factor of two um, yeah okay so yeah I think this one supports a scale factor of two whereas the um, SRCNN supports a scale factor of two three four now the um, the issue is that um, you can see I was using this ESPCN model here to upscale the video uh, I'm using a Dell XPS 15 from 2019 with an NVIDIA GTX 1650 graphics card with 16 gig of RAM so it's not a wimpy computer I tried using the um, SRCNN um, model with um, a scale factor of 2 and it just wouldn't work for me it just says you don't have enough memory um, so if you're going to use this model you are going to need a lot of RAM um, I couldn't even get it to work at all so that's just something to mention uh, you, you're probably best sticking with this efficient subpixel convolutional neural network model um, ESPCM for short but that's just something to mention um, off the bat um, if you try the SRCNN model, most likely um, it will fail unless you've got a uh, shed load of RAM installed. I'm not sure how much you, you need, but 16 gig um, will, <laughs> apparently isn't enough. Um, so I'm not sure if that's um, maybe uh, an issue where it, it just can't allocate enough memory and i'm not sure if that may be something to do with system d um you know the system d killer thing i don't know but i couldn't get it to work anyway so that's the filter complex and what we're doing down here is um, you can see here it's taking the video file zero v that's the video track it's splitting it up it's scaling it and it's outputting this as merged and then what we're doing is we're mapping merged and zero colon a is the audio track so what i'm doing in this script is um i'm presuming that the uh audio track is already aac as you can see here i'm using the um uh, codec audio copy now what you'll notice here is the sws flags lanxus and the uh, codec um H264 with a CRF, CRF value of 17. So this actually uses the Lanxus filter in combination with this model to do the upscaling. Now I'm not sure I haven't done any tests to see if there's actually any difference between the regular Lanxus filter and one processed with this because um, just because it takes time to do do that and go through and you know go through and upscale videos with different methods and then compare them. Um, I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> so 
that's how this works and you can see here we're then um, outputting this as a mp4 file so that's the script so let's go through and um you can see here's here's the um stuff i actually upscaled so what i'll do is i'll take that um i'll take one of these videos and actually process it so you can see how long this takes so um i think big buck bunny from memory is about 10 minutes long so that's probably a bit long um let's see how long the two kittens is uh yeah, that's six minutes, so that's not too bad. So, okay, let's move and uh, and panda and copy that file across uh, upscale two kittens. Okay, so we've got the two kittens file here. Um, now the other thing that I should mention is the increase in file size. So um, just before I do this, what I'm going to do is show you the um, difference in file size. So you can see here, here's the here's the original two kittens upscaled with a CROF value of 17. It's gone up to 324. Um, Big Buck Bunny, which was 65, um, has gone up to 609 and panda which was 680 kilobytes has gone up to 4.2 now this is just dependent on the crf value that you use if you used a higher value for crf like 22 you get a smaller file size but that kind of defeats the point you want a nice big file that looks good so having a big file size isn't an issue that's just something i wanted to mention so what i'm going to do is actually um run this script ff super resolution dash i two kittens and you'll see it goes through and now you can see here if i run nvidia smi you'll see it's running user local bin ffmpeg and that is user local bin ffmpeg um, inside the container what you can see here is the actual speed that this is processing the video at so you can see here we've got a speed of um, 0 0.800 so a speed of one would be um, that it would be kind of doing it in real time as it were it's doing it at the, at the same rate the video would actually play so you can see here we're getting pretty good speeds We've already got 40 seconds to go. So this just gives you an indication of actually how long it's going to take to process something. And I just wanted to show you this to compare it with Dandry 2X, which I showed you in a previous video, um, which uses Wafu 2X in the background. But as I said, the issue with that is that the processing time for videos is ridiculously slow. Um, even setting multiprocessors, um, using it and setting it to using multiprocessor, um, the speed I have noticed, perhaps like say doing a 1080p to a 4K, is going to take over an hour per minute of footage, which means you've got a five minute video, you're going to be sit, sat there for over five hours to process it. Um, and the issue with that is, suppose you, you know you got uh, suppose you got a half hour video. Um, that means you're going to have to leave it running all day and part of the night to upscale the video. Um, so this is much much quicker. You can see we're already a minute in. So I'll just leave that chundering away um, and just come back to uh, my notes here. So the gist of this is you install Podman or Docker. Uh, you install the NVIDIA toolkit, um, you run that tweak, yeah, you edit the etc. NVIDIA container runtime config.toml and you change no C groups from false to true and that allows the um, container toolkit to run as your users instead of root. And then basically what we did was we just pulled down the um, 
Docker container. Uh, and on uh, Fedora, we have to select Docker.io instead of RPM Fusion. Um, and then we actually get into um, getting this set up. So again, we, we create an alias in our um, tilde forward slash dot zsh or bash rc file. Um, you can call the alias whatever you want. And as you can see here, I'm using Podman so uh, instead of Docker. So the difference between this command and the one on the site, if I can give it to you here, you can see the alias Docker RM. You can see the section here that I modified PWD data. And what that does is that means that when you, whenever you run the script on something that's not using SE Linux, like Fedora, that will just behave like a regular script. It will run in whatever directory you run it in, and it will map that directory to the data directory inside the container. So because I'm using um, Fedora with SE Linux, we have to do a little work around. And that was adding this security op label equals disabled. Um, and that allowed access to the GPU from the container and then what i also had to do was add dash dash privileged and map temp data to the um, data directory again this is just for se linux stuff you don't have to worry about this if you're on like ubuntu or whatever um, then i created the um, temp data directory set um, the permissions to 777 so that um, that that's needed because if you don't do that step it's not going to work at all it won't have uh, right permissions to that directory so that's the issue um is that se linux is actually preventing um, access to the home directory um, because it doesn't have um, the correct permissions so then we copied the video to that directory and again you don't need to do that step if you're not using se linux and then we actually run the um, ffmpeg command you can see down here and we 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 call this ffmpeg dash tensorflow and that is the name of the um the alias that we defined in our zshrc file and finally we had the script that i actually knocked up um, which is this one here simple little script so this is the function here and as I said what I'm doing here is rather than actually relying on the alias defined in the ZSH file, I'm actually putting the podman um, bit of code inside the uh, the function here. So there's all this podman stuff here. That is basically uh, running FFmpeg inside the container. Okay, and then finally what we've got down here is the filter complex where as I said, what it does is it's um, there seems to be some debate on this. It's supposed to only work on one plane, the Y plane. Uh, you know, you've got YUV, uh, and that's the plane that it um, uses to scale. Someone else said that's not the case, but I'm not sure. Um, so that's what that section does. Then we've got the scale factor two. Um, and the model, and as I said, um, you're not going to want to change this unless you um, the uh, the ESPCN model. I only think has a scale factor of two, so you're going to be limited to a scale factor of two unless you use the other filter and the other model rather, and um, that will allow you to use a scale factor of two, three, or four. But as I said, I couldn't get that to work at all; it just ran out of memory for me, even with 16 gig of RAM. So, and again, what we've got down here is we're mapping that um, and the audio. Uh, we're using the Lanxus filter, CRF value, copying the audio track. So if, if the um, audio track was something else, we'd need to set that to um, AAC. But um, all the footage I'm working with, I already know it's going to be uh, going to have an AAC um, codec. And what we then do is set the PIX format to YUV420, move flags, fast start. 
what this does is this puts the uh what's called the ipod atom at the beginning of the video um so that if you actually start playing the video on the web it will start playing straight away if you don't have the ipod atom at the beginning of the video by default it will be set at the end of the video and what will happen is you have to load the whole video into memory before you can play it uh, if you were really old you may remember back in the day um pre-youtube times in the 90s if you just uploaded a video um you may have seen stuff like you know divx and all those kind of old things it wouldn't play it wouldn't stream the video straight away um you'd have to download you'd have to load the whole video before it could actually play uh, so this is why you want the fast start option here so that if you upload this file um you know somewhere online um, it will actually load up and buffer and play straight away um rather than sitting there waiting for the whole thing to download into memory so let's have a look and see how we're getting here so we're at four minutes um 20 seconds into a uh, six minute video now the other advantage that i should mention here is you can see we actually say it's actually saying here um well i may be trying to allocate 3.3 uh, 5 gig with buying free counter the call indicates this is not a failure but may mean there'd be more performance gains if there was more memory available the other thing that um may be affecting this is that i have got balanced mode set up so if i come up here uh you can see power mode balanced here um i don't know if setting that to performance would actually make any difference but um you can actually um ignore this error um while it's actually processing it's not going to uh crap out on you so now the other the other issue um this compared to dandred 2x is what you can actually do is you can if i was to quit this now um, i'll still be able to play the video even though it hadn't completed with dandred 2x the way that it works is it actually chops the video up into different segments processes them all individually and at the end it combines them all so you can't actually um you could of course do just a short clip and encode it but you know if something's um chundering away you've got to wait for it to finish completely with dandre 2x um whereas with this you know if i was just to press uh, Control c or q it would quit and i would actually be able to play this video and show you how it'll upscale so you can see the speed down here has actually dropped to uh 471472 so it's operating about um half speed as it were whereas before when it kicked in it was using about 800 hence the sort of bit of slowdown so let's get into having a, a, a look at this um let me go through this actual post by this guy um mark here so this was actually explaining you need um basically what you you need to get this set up and the way that he was doing about doing it here you can see the training scripts require about 42 gig worth of videos and nine gig worth of images and um, so this is all about actually training the model um, the model so generating the data sets took a few hours and training just mo one model took nearly the entire day so this is why you really don't want to build this manually um, yourself because a couple of things you're going to have to download over 50 gig of stuff um, and then generating the data sets take a few hours and just training one model took me the whole day so I don't know about you but that doesn't really you know <laughs> make me want to use it you know i don't think oh yeah i want to sit down and download 50 gig and then you know watch the computer doing something for a whole day um so yeah you can see this is the the manual way of doing this um and you, you can see there's lots of uh 
stuff you've actually got to go through and do um you know and that looked like a real pain so as i was scrolling through this thing oh great you know this this you know even though dandre 2x is really slow this looks like a right pain in the ass to actually get it set up um and it wasn't till i actually reached this bit down here um uh Michaelus dirk um and and this other guy um have taken the excellent answer of mark and we've used it to prepare a docket image of um ffmpeg and lib tensorflow so basically what they've done is they've taken the work by mark there and they've actually created this docker image um and what it's actually got is it's got the models all pre-trained so rather than you downloading 40 gig of stuff and then training the models for a day um, it's all going to be uh, pre-done for you uh, and so this is the instructions here and you can't really see any difference in this um, uh, example that they've got here so again this is the github repository and you can see this was last updated um, last year so this is the section that I was uh, referring to. If you you can use different versions of lib TensorFlow, FMPEG, CUDA, or Ubuntu um, in a customized container, but keep in mind that your version of lib TensorFlow here, uh, which is 1.15, should match your version of CUDA, which is 10, um, and you've got to see this compatibility table. And your version of CUDA should also match your NVIDIA driver. Um, so you've got the compatibility table here and then the, these release notes. So this is the release notes for um, CUDA and all the different versions. Um, yeah, here's, the, here's the CUDA um, toolkit. And so this is which version of CUDA ver works with which version of the NVIDIA graphics driver. And I think I'm on 12.2. Then what you've got here is TensorFlow and TensorFlow has to match your version of CUDA. Um, and there, I think there are um, the way that this works is it actually the Docker image pulls down stuff from NVIDIA and you've only got builds for like um, Ubuntu 2004 and Ubuntu 2204. You don't you, you've only got builds um, for the LTS is not um, 2304 or something like that. So the fan's starting to lower down a bit here. Um, and as you can see, it's now stopped. So the reason for me for doing that was just to give you a, a real-time demo of how long it actually takes to process a six and a half minute video. So as you can see here, we've got two kittens and two kittens super resolution. Um, so this is the output name that was given by the script that I run. So the output name, unless you, you can use the dash O option and give it your own output name, but... Um, if you don't, what it's going to do is it's going to take the input name and call it like super resolution and the date and time. And the reason for this is so that we can batch process stuff. So um, using that script, what I can actually do is go through and batch process um, loads of videos and it will automatically rename them. So ls starts lh and we can see here uh, it's gone from uh, 59 to 324. So MPD two kittens. And uh, again, this video is in the public domain YouTube mods, um, just in case you're watching, because I know you like to take down my videos. So there's no issues playing this because this is from 1942. Nothing to it. I want to eat. I've got stuff. So I just want to show you. Um, So you'll see there is actually some uh, sort of pixelation around this character down here in the original video. So when you're looking at the upscaled um, video, that uh, pixelation was already there in the um, the original. I love to eat. I go home, fenceless boy. Step down, homie. Skip to go up. Me, do it. <laughs> okay, so that's the original. And here's the upscaled. And you see this .mv um, directory being created there. I think that is the um, an NVIDIA, um, yeah, something that's been created using um, NVIDIA. 
So this is the upscale version. What we're looking for is um, it's not. We're basically it's like having a picture and stretching it out two times. Um, if you had a picture and you, you know, you expanded it, you know, there wouldn't be enough paint to cover everything. So it, you know, it wouldn't look as wouldn't look the same. So that's kind of an effect what we're doing. Um, so what we're looking for is just make sure everything looks the same as it did on the original. Um, not that it's sort of like magically AI sharpened. We just want to make sure everything's crisp. You know, there's no um, image loss or anything like that. And so you can see this is a good example here of um, the text still looking crisp, not washed out, um, sharp corners, that kind of stuff. Bird out of that nest and what so this is what I'm talking about here this slight sort of uh, kind of like pixelation around here but as I mentioned this was on the original video Money, don't you bird out of that little bird let me out of let me out of I'll get a baby little bird you mean a poor little teensy wincy itsy bitsy defenseless boy yes let me out of let me out of I'll get a baby guy way out my life um, let me out of take it easy take Gonna be okay. So you can see this is looking absolutely fine. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just go back to the desktop and the upscale um, thing here. So uh, we've got the panda. So let's have a look at the panda one last time and then I'll wrap it up. So the sneezing panda, the original file size, uh, original resolution rather. Okay, uh, I missed the sneeze. Um, MPV Panda 2X. So you can see this has been upscaled two times, and you'll notice it still looks absolutely sharp. Um, there's no um, weird artifacts or pixelation. Um, there's no change in the color contrast um, of the actual clip, um, which is something that will happen with Dandri 2X, which uses Wafu 2X in the background. <laughs> so you can see that looks fine to my eyes. Um, now I'm not sure if there's actually any difference between um, this and the regular Lanxus filter. Um, you'll just have to check it out and give it a go, but that's basically the gist of how we can use the FFmpeg SR filter to actually upscale stuff and some of the workarounds needed for uh, SE Linux um, and also the fact that you may have to use the ESPCN filter as opposed to the SR filter um, model rather because um, it just required too much RAM. I didn't have enough RAM for that. So that's all for now, and um, I think this might be a good option for actually um, upscaling stuff. Um, but you'll have to check out whether you know this is any better than using Handbrake and the Lanxus filter or FFmpeg and the Lanxus filter. But it's certainly faster than using Dandre 2X, which is a, took about an hour a minute. So that's all for now, and I'll put links to all all this under the video.